42 through 44. Now, the soldiers wanted to keep. Now, here's what happens. Back in biblical days, if a soldier lost one person, they would die or get mutilated. So it says right here that a soldier wanted to kill the prisoners and make sure they didn't escape. Look what happens. Read, read verse 43 with me, please. But the commanding officer wanted to spare Paul, so he didn't let, any, let them carry out their plan. So he ordered all who could swim to jump overboard first and make it for land. Look, I got you. you got to look at verse 43 right here. Verse 43 says, this command, why is it that this prison did not die? Why didn't they die? Because of Paul. What am I saying to you? There's favor on your life that's going to bless some other folks. See, the, 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 the prison at that point, they said, if this ship goes down, if, they, if any prisoner escapes, the, prison, the, the guards do their own time. But because Paul had favor, as a result, other folk got blessed. There's some folk in your family that are covered by your favor. And folk on your job covered by your favor. And some folk in your neighborhood covered by your favor. So when the storm comes up, well, a thousand fall at your side, ten thousand at your right side, but it shall not come down in because there's some favor on our lives in the name of Jesus. But because of the favor on Paul's life, other folk got saved. Good. Now, now here's what happened. But suppose Paul had done like some of us have done when storms come up. If his actions and his beliefs and confession didn't line up, you, you know the story would end a different way right here. It's a matter of saying that and when in an impossible situation, when things don't look like you wanted them to look at all, and things are looking so bad, our, our actions and our beliefs and our confessions have to line up, and look what happens. Now the angel said you all won't make it. Now, look, now this is what I want to read verse 44. Let's read this together. And the rest some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass, they all escaped, they escaped all safe to land. What are we saying right here? Everybody made it to land. Some made it on boards, and then the sermon title I had years ago was making on broken pieces. I'm telling you, everybody here is making on some broken pieces. There's some broken dreams that you had, but you're still making it. And some broken promises that were in your life, but you're still making it. And some broken hearts in here, but you're still making it. And you won't make it on your broken piece. Don't you give up the process. You won't make it on your broken piece. You don't need to have the whole ship glory. All you need is a little piece of the ship. And God says, I'm going to be with you in the midst of your storm to help you make it on broken pieces. So all because Paul's, all because Paul's, what happens? His actions, and beliefs and confessions aligned. I'm telling you right now, that is the key for our manifestation right here. When our actions and our beliefs and our confessions line up, watch, 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 watch greater and more manifestation. If anybody's ready to receive greater manifestation, even more manifestation, can you please go and give God one more hand for the So what happens? So sometimes we don't see greater and more manifestation because of a failure of alignment. Here's the second one. Why are we not seeing greater and more manifestation? Watch this next one. Sometimes because of a failure of agreement. Failure of agreement. Now what does that mean? Sometimes we are acting in disharmony and disagreement with the word. The word promised us this but we're acting like this. We're not going in, we're not going in the same direction with the word, but going counter and contrary to the word. So when you hear this word agreement, and I'm, 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 I'm going to ask y'all both sides of this minute, but anybody, when you hear the word agreement, if somebody, if there's a bumper sticker, agreement is what? How would you finish that sentence? Uh, that, that bumper sticker. Agreement is what? What would you say? Agreement. Agreement. Same beliefs. Same beliefs. All right. Agreement. So everybody want to go with that? Same beliefs? I guess it does. Y'all still fool in Turkey? So that your agreement is full of... Now here's what happens. Let's, let's look at this idea about agreement. Agreement comes from the Greek word. Let's look right here. It means putting down together. Hmm. What does that mean? Here's what happens. Suppose... It, it, so let's think about this. In, 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 in any relationship. So I'm going to use my wife and myself now. Suppose she has a desire to go one place and I have a desire to go another place, then there's disagreement. Agreement says we're going to put down what we wanted to individually and we're going to rise up together united. That's what agreement is. That I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it down. That, we, that, that, that this is standing in the way of harmony. 
And so I'm willing to put down what I want. I'm willing, you're going to put down what you want. We're going to put it down together. But we're going to raise up with something stronger and something better because we're going to come into a spirit of agreement. So agreement is we have agreed. We have said we're going to put things down together. Opinions or habits or situations. We're going to put that down together and then raise now with an, another level of unity. Is that good? So we're talking about agreement there, agreement. Second thing, that's from, the, from one, one Greek meaning. Next Greek meaning is understand, support, or guarantee. So this is symbolic to the covenant of the Old Testament. When somebody, made a, when somebody said something in the Old Testament, there was a covenant made, and you remember in, in, in Genesis 15, that at this point they, they would cut animals in half, and if somebody broke the covenant, they would say, maybe you'd be like one of the, cor the corpses over here. And as a result, so this idea of agreement, now we guarantee that now we have agreed, we are going to guarantee we're going to see this thing through. We're going to support each other to see this thing through. We're going to stand under one another and stand under our promise and stand under our commitment and stand under our covenant. That is what agreement is all about. So now, with that having been said, now we can read Matthew 18, 19, and 20 together. Let's read this together. Again, I say unto you that the two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them, a spirit of agreement. And here's the point. I, I, I want mean, to share this now. I'm going to say what I'm saying here. Let's read this. So you should never say amen to anything you are not certain about or are not in complete agreement with because to do so is to be speaking with hypocrisy. Sometimes folk can ask me to pray for stuff and you know in your spirit it doesn't feel right. If we go back and put our agreement with that thing, that's hypocrisy. If you know it's not lining up with the word, I don't care, I don't care how much Boo say he loves you. If it's not lining up with the word has said, if I go back and put my agreement with it, because it says that two or three should touch and agree, on anything we ask, it shall be done. And that, I, that, that now our role is to make sure we understand the word enough. We understand the movement of God enough to say, when you to ask me to be in agreement with you, I now know this is consistent and not violating what the word is said. So I'm telling you, some people have asked us to, to pray some things that are completely contrary to the word. And here's another piece. When somebody asks you to pray for them, I'm offering that it's time to be clear about asking specifically what do you want me to pray for? You got to find, I, I, I've told you a story. We had a former member who was born and having heart surgery. And he said, I want you to pray with me. So I assumed that what he's asking for is to have complete healing. They didn't have to go through the surgery. He was asking for prayer that the insurance company would pay for the surgery. We were not in agreement. And so, and so, so in the midst of, so I, so I get through the prayer, I mean, I'm throwing down that prayer. I mean, we shot, we shot our time out in tongues, and by the time we get done, like, amen. He's looking like, that's not what I asked you to pray for. So you got to be clear about what the agreement. So I was not in agreement, because I, don't even, I, I, I needed to be clear. Just take one more minute. Now, let me be perfectly clear. What is it that I'm agreeing with? What do you ask me to pray for? Now, we did go back and pray, you know, for the insurance, and the insurance did pay. But I, I, I mean, that was a good prayer right there. I'm going to put that thing in the kitty. So, not that kitty. But the idea was, I have, you have to be in agreement. I have to be clear about what people are asking for as well. So, when there's not, when there's a failure of alignment, when there's a failure of agreement, that's when we're positioned, we're out of position to receive what God has for us. And why are we not seeing greater and more manifestations? What's the last one? Failure of abandonment. Failure of, what, what does that mean? See, abandonment means to com leave completely, to desert, give up, or discontinue. What are we seeing right here? It is time for us to abandon worry. Amen, somebody. Abandon worry. To completely leave Give up and discontinue worry. It is time to make sure we abandon worry. Now, you think that there's enough in the natural. If we look at this world in the natural realm, there's enough to be worried about. But in the supernatural, we trust that God has already worked it out as well. Now, what does it mean right now, worry? Worry simply comes from the Greek word that means to strangle and to choke out. So now, when I'm worrying, I am choking out clarity 
that God has for me to get up out of this situation. Come on now. That when I'm worrying, I'm strangling the clarity, the insight, the wisdom that God has for me to now work this out. It's already been done, but now my worry clouds the path. My worry, I now can't hit a GPS. My worry, I don't know how to work this thing out. And so now I'm just, I'm just going around and not sure because worrying will strangle and choke out the word worry. Read this with me, please. Worry is a down payment on a problem you may never have. Get a refund. And I got love this one here. Let's read this together. Worry is a conversation you have with yourself about things you cannot change. Oh, watch this about prayer there. Prayer is a conversation you have with God about things that we ought to say he has changed. Glory to God. So worry, I'm having this conversation with myself, can't even change it. Can't change this, can't change that. And that's been so worries development. I'm strangling, choking out. Prayer is about saying, I am now talking to God about things that he's already worked out as well. What about worry? Worry implies that we don't quite trust God. Trust that God is big enough, that God is powerful enough, or loving enough to take care of what has happened in our lives. Come on, somebody. Worry and worry and worry and worry. And so when worry, this is what 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says. Not just in every transition, but one transition. Worry ends when faith begins. Faith and worry cannot coexist. Light and darkness cannot coexist. But when, so if I'm going to worry, don't pray. And if I'm going to pray, come on, don't worry. So whenever I decide I'm going to trust God and step out on faith, that's when worry is going to end then. So what are you saying for Philippians 4, 6, and 7? Don't worry about anything. Instead, do what? Pray about everything. Pray. I'm, I'm talking to God about things he's already worked out. I'm talking to God about things he's already changed. Then tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Glory to God. Then you will experience God's shalom peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Don't worry about anything. It, uh, worry is, it is strangling and choking out the path. For me to get to manifestation. The, 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 the GPS is now broken. It's, it's now discombobulated because now I'm allowing my, I'm allowing the, the senses to be strangled and choked out as well. So abandon. Completely leave. Desert, give up. So you abandon what? What was the first one? Abandon what? W? Word. Word. Here's what this next one. Abandon wavering. Give up wavering. Discontinue wavering. What does that mean, wavering? There are, there are some people who have what I guess they call it now commitment issues. Wavering. <laughs> I didn't ask you, this, this, this is not a Catholic church. You don't, I'm not the father. You don't have to come to a little, little thing confess right now. So if that's you, you just you say amen and smile. So, so the abandonment issue is wavering. Wait, what is wavering? Wavering simply is being double minded, unsettled, unstable. Now, let's see, some people keep it that way. Let's see, some people keep it that way. They just trying to call me crazy. Now, what it means is, is double mind. Here's double mind. Double minded means I know what the word says, and I'm going to believe that for a minute, but then when the circumstances of life come up, I'm going to believe something else. I'm believing I heard from Isaiah 53 5, I'm healed, but pain kicked in, so now I'm going to stop believing I'm healed. I know what the word says, my God shall supply all my needs according to the recent glory, what the word says. But now I don't see my needs being met, and so I'm going to go back and start believing. So double-minded, I got two minds, two minds, that's what happened, unsettled. So the unsettled, so that's why, that's why David, that's why James says, it's like being tossed on the wave of a sea, being unsettled. What I'm offering here is, there cannot be a plan B with God. You go with whatever God has said. There cannot be a plan B with God. You go with what God has said. If God has promised deliverance, you stand on deliverance. If God has promised breakthrough, you stand on that breakthrough. Do not allow ourselves to have a plan B because we're going to go with that every time. The double mind that says, I'm going to trust for a while, then I'm going to stop trusting. Or, or, or how many of us have ever been in a situation where you, were, you only had limited time for lunch and the person you were with couldn't decide where they want to go? Y'all ever had that happen to you? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you, 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 got, you got, you start off with an hour. Y'all in the car 15 minutes, they want Subway, then they want Olive Garden and stuff. At this point, I'm going to get some nabs. See, I did the double-minded, unstable, double-minded, double, that I got two minds. This is what it really means, two minds. 